Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 50. And this week, I've got a real treat for you. I've got my great friend and just insanely talented artist, Aaron Blaze, who's recorded an episode and video just for us. Now, I asked Aaron to do this because for the time that I've known Aaron now, which is kind of like a year and a half, roughly something like that, I've really enjoyed watching, seeing how he as a, a traditional artist does what he does. Aaron worked for Disney for you know over 20 years. He worked on films like The Lion King, Poker. Pocahontas, Aladdin, he directed Brother Bear. Uh, for those of you in the UK, he did the, uh, this last year's John Lewis advert, The Bear and the Hare, and many, many more movies and stuff that he's worked on. So you can imagine, he really knows his stuff. And the reason I asked Aaron to do a video for us was because I think as photographers and retouchers, if we want to learn and continue to learn and improve our craft, we need to look outside of our circle, look beyond photographers and retouchers and see what they're doing and and how we can kind of like incorporate the techniques that they use into our own work. And I've seen so many things that Aaron's done that I've kind of picked up on and, and done in my own pictures. Um, so Aaron's recorded this video, I asked him to do it, and he's really, you know, gratefully taking the time out of his own life and busy time to do this for us. So all I want to ask is that you watch the video and just kind of see how you could use the techniques he's going to go through in your own pictures. I know already how I'm going to be using this, and I'll maybe show that in a, in a future video, but just sit back, enjoy Aaron doing this, and at the end of the video, we'll just have a little bit of discussion, and I'll just show you some places where you can check out more of what Aaron's doing. Um, but hey, I'm not going to steal his thunder anymore. Aaron, it's over to you. Hey, everybody. Aaron Blaze here, and I'm on Glenn Dewis's channel. Oh, yes, I made it. Hi everybody, my name is Aaron Blaze, and uh, the first thing I want to do today is just thank Glenn Dewis for posting me on his page and all of the, uh, the support that he's giving me over the last year and a half that we've known each other. Um, as I'm sure all of you out there know, Glenn is an incredible guy, um, a real blessing for me that I've come to know him in the last year and a half and we've become friends. And so thank you, thank you, thank you, Glenn, for kind of putting me out there and helping to promote me and the uh, different things I have to say and, and that sort of thing. I, I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Aaron Blaze and um, I'm a painter and a, a digital artist, a traditional painter and an animator. I was with Disney for 21 years and I've worked on a whole bunch of different animated movies. And But during that time also, I've kept my hand in uh, concept design and illustration, fine art painting, that sort of thing. And I've discovered over the last year or so, as I've started doing these tutorials, and Glenn himself, he's, he also realizes this, is that there's a lot of overlap between what I do and what photographers do from composition and how to see a subject and, and all of that sort of thing. But also in Photoshop, we're finding that we are, I'm finding techniques that Glenn does that are really cool, and he finds techniques that I do that are really cool, and we thought this would be a really great opportunity to kind of do a cross, cross promotion, and so once again, thank you, Glenn. So the thing we want to do today is, um, it's just real simple, but it's fun, and it's kind of, it's a kind of cool shortcut that I use when I do my animal paintings. I do a lot of animal sketches and drawings and paintings and that sort of thing. And obviously when painting animals, mammals especially, you gotta paint fur. And so I discovered in Photoshop kind of this cool trick in order to create fur. So I wanna, the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna pull over a couple of images that I've created um, just to show you, how about, the, uh, show you these lions, for, or lions, show you these tigers first. And you can see, um, these are, uh, this is a, a tiger I painted a couple of years ago in Photoshop. And you can see all this fur texture, especially if you look at those those black stripes and all that fun texture. Now, if I were to paint that traditionally by hand, that would be really difficult. And so I'll, I'm going to show you this technique. Here's another one real quick that has a, 
you know, once again, you can see all of that texture, all that texturing in there. I can blow it up even more in that fur. And, um, and we thought, you know, this is something that you can use in your photography if you want to add texture to hair or if you want to create grasses because, you know, if you turn this, you know, if you turn these textures straight up and down, it looks like grass. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with that. So let's just get to it. The first thing I want to do is let's create a file, a new, uh, new document. I'm going to make it uh, 150. It doesn't need to be really big. I always go by inches. Let's make it six inches by six inches. Now I'm going to, um, let's go ahead and, and fill it in just so I can see it a little better. Fill it in with white and I'll, show, I'll explain why in just a second. We're just going to work in black and white because what we're going to do today, we're just going to create a simple brush. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to create a brush. I'll show you how to create the brush. So we've created a white document and we're going to go over to our brush tool over here come up to our brushes. Now I've got a lot of brushes. Don't be freaked out by that. I actually, you know, anybody can do this with any of the standard brushes that you get in Photoshop. We're just going to grab this brush right here, right? The second one in, let's just grab that and we're going to go to black. All right. We'll set that to black. So now, um, we're going to make our op opacity full all the way. And so we're just doing straight black with these dots and watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go dot, dot look i'm just making a whole bunch of dots and i'm kind of doing it in a circular pattern like so all right let's do that so now what you do is go up to edit and drop down to define brush preset and you're going to see it's going to create this little brush let's call it hairbrush okay and we hit okay so now look we've got a brush it's giant right now but you can see we've got our brush all set so now we don't need this anymore so let's just get rid of that and if we come over to all of our brushes now once again don't be freaked out by all the brushes I have but if we drop all the way down to the bottom look there is our hairbrush right there all right so now let's come back over. I'm going to bring over another image and show you how we can uh, work on that. This is another image right here called When the King Speaks. You can see it on the title there. And um, you can see I've created, once again, some of that fur texture. And I want to show you how I did it. But let's go to the smear tool right here. You can see it looks like a little finger just <laughs> smearing. So push on that. Now come up and let's grab our brush that we just created and bring it down. We're gonna bring it, there we go. We're gonna bring it down. I'm gonna bring it down to about 120 pixels, okay? Now watch what happens. Let's set it to, I'm gonna start it at about 62%, the strength, which is right up here. And I'm just gonna go right into the painting, do this right in the middle, let's blow this up even more. And watch what happens when I drag it across. Can you see that? Look at that. I'm making fur. See how it does that? Now I've gone in and I've created a couple of brushes. Here's one where I used really big dots. Okay, see how those, those dots are really, really big. You see that? Now I can take that. Now watch, look at the difference. Look how strong that is. I can come in and you can create fur just by creating these brushes with dots and you can go through and then you can you can do whatever you can smear it you can create texture you can do all kinds of cool stuff so when I drop that down now this is probably too much fur for <laughs> for this guy but you can see all of a sudden wow look at that his back has got this really cool fur texture and let's say you know it works really great for areas that are light against dark or dark against light so if I want to show some fur coming off of his shoulder. Let me blow that up some more. I knock that strength down a little bit, you know, against that darkness, so it, it'll show off, it'll show really well. There. Look at that, see? And you've got fur. And so that's what I've done on, on all of these images here, you know, like this one here. If I, if I blow this up, you can see 
that what I've done, if I come in here, I'll drop this size down. I can just drag that black against the orange and create these really great fur textures. Now let me bring this over here. I can just grab my tool, blow it up, I'm going to knock that strength up, knock the size up, and look at this. I can create, and you know, it'd be kind of gentle in places, like it's a clump, and then maybe we have really tall, you know, we can go big on the strength and go, whoa, whoa, like that, oh, like that, and come back, knock the strength back down, and hit some smaller areas. And look at that really great texture we're creating. All just from this simple brush we just did, just with a few dots. And look at this, now I can go in, let's go in with a little darker. Create a new layer. Just go right over the top of it. Darker still. Come in here. And look how loose I'm being, I'm just scribbling stuff in. And then we come in with our brush, once again, creating grass, different values, maybe there's a shadow, you know, that dark area is a shadow going across the grass that we just created. Look at that. Once again, let's go, let's try knocking the strength up and pulling some big ones up. Look at that. Oof. See how fun that is? So experiment with that. Have fun uh, going into your photographs, and if there's an area where you feel you might need a little bit more texture, go in and play with it a little bit. Try creating these brushes, and you can do it not just with dots. Try experimenting with different textures. You can grab textures from uh, you know different grunge textures that you might have. Take a photograph of something that's got a lot of gravelly texture and try making a brush out of that. Experiment. Have a lot of fun with it because you're going to find happy little accidents. That's how I've discovered these kind of tricks. And so once again, I just want to say thank you, Glenn, for having me on. Uh, this has been great, and I really appreciate you doing this for me. I really cherish our friendship. And you know what? I can't wait to see you in July. I'm going to be over on your side of the ocean. So for those of you that are going to the Photoshop Live event in Brighton, England, in July 18th and 19th, I'm really looking forward to seeing you there. And um, so that's it. Thank you so much. Please check out my channel, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Now, when I first saw Aaron do that particular technique, I kind of knew straight away exactly where I could use that. If you've seen any of the videos that I've done to this point, you'll know that I've got a bit of a thing about doing cutouts and selections and working out kind of tricks, if you like, to make them look better than they originally could be done. And I think this technique here will be absolutely perfect, especially on a picture that I did in my uh, video last time, which is where I showed how to remove those fence lines on that lion. Actually cutting out the line from its original background is proving quite challenging because of that mane, the fur there is really quite fine and I'm convinced that this technique will work just great on that. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work on that picture and I will post it up and maybe go through that just to show you how Aaron's technique, a technique my traditional artist who uses Photoshop, is helping out people like myself and yourself as photographers and retouchers. But listen, whether you're watching this on YouTube or on iTunes, definitely check out the uh, description section because in there I'm gonna put a few links to where you, you can see other work from Aaron. I'll put a link to his main website and also his YouTube channel because Aaron does a weekly show. He's got an episode he posts out every single week and the really short, sharp and to the point where he covers techniques that he uses in his own paintings. And there's so many times I've watched these videos I think I could do exactly the same kind of technique in my own pictures as a retoucher. You know, I'm not a traditional artist, but I think there's definitely, like Aaron said as well, there's an overlap in techniques that we both use that we can take advantage of in our own images. So definitely check those out. Usually I say to uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm kind of hoping you have anyway, but if you haven't, click on it. But definitely subscribe to Aaron's YouTube channel. I think you're gonna learn a lot. Well, not think, you are definitely gonna learn a lot. But hey, that's all for this week. I'll see you next time. <laughs>